Hi, this is Ogie with Visual Impact and in this video we'll take a quick look at a trio of Panasonic 4K PTZ cameras and a compact remote control for them. In this video we'll take a look at the UE40 which is an entry-level 4K camera, a mid-range and very well-specced UE100 and the top-end UE150 model which offers an impressive array of functionality designed for high-end broadcast. All three models can be powered and controlled via a single network cable thanks to PoE Plus support. The UE40 is a good entry-level option focused on delivering professional-grade 4K video on a budget. It features a 1 over 2.5 inch sensor offering 4K up to 30p video output as well as Full HD up to 60p. The UE40 is equipped with a 24x optical zoom giving you plenty of range for flexible framing and composition while the new direct drive system provides a smooth and precise pan and tilt movement. The UE40's compact design and quiet operation make it suitable for a wide range of productions, from corporate boardrooms to houses of worship, classrooms, small streaming, gaming setups and podcasts. Moving up to the mid-range option, the UE100 comes with the same size 4K sensor, the same range, uh, 24 times optical zoom with image stabilization, however the footprint is slightly beefier and we also get a bump in frame rates, up to 4K 60p, in addition to expanded professional connectivity including 12G and 3G SDR outputs as well as HDMI 2.0. Full baseband NDI as well as the more compressed NDI HX is included, which is a huge benefit for productions or studios that have already built their workflow around the flexibility given by the NDI protocol. Another cool feature that this camera has is a high sensitivity mode, uh, which is a new feature that allows you uh, to in a way boost your image without adding more gain, thus preventing the introduction of unnecessary noise. And speaking of high sensitivity, the UE150 is an even better performer in low light thanks to its larger one inch sensor, which also offers more shallower depth of field. The UE150 also brings an anti-aliasing filter. The 20 times zoom uh, may offer less range uh, than the uh, lens on the UE100. However, the uh, lens here is slightly wider, giving you more coverage on the wide end, which is great for events. Aimed at higher end broadcast workflows, the UE150 comes with an HDR mode with BT2020 support, dedicated monitoring uh, SDI output, 12G and 3G SDI outputs are also present, gen lock and also fiber for more advanced workflows. I'm a bit of a PTZ noob when it comes to setup and control, but it didn't take long for me to set up and connect all three cameras to the RP60 remote control panel, compared to uh, operating the pan tilt or zoom from the web interface for each camera, the RP60 is like playing a video game, the controls are much more intuitive and the new advanced joystick with speed adjustments makes it possible to get very precise and smooth camera movements. Uh, on the front, uh, there's five direct camera control buttons, which can be expanded in the menu to include a lot more. Uh, a clear LCD screen is also included, and you get four assignable buttons, uh, as well as dedicated iris and zoom controls. The camera setup process on the RP60 is very straightforward. All you have to do is connect both devices to the switch via an RJ45 Ethernet cable and make sure both are on the same network and subnet mask by configuring their IP settings. In our case, we have three cameras and one remote controller, so we'll need to make sure that each has a unique IP address. This is done by changing the uh, last two digits on each uh, after the 192.168.10. Uh, I've assigned the UE100 camera to .10 uh, the UE150 to 11 and UE40 to 12. I used uh, Easy IP to do this. Um, you can also use the new uh, media production suite uh, that Panasonic offers. Um, there's also uh, a couple of other uh, software options. They're free that you can download from the Panasonic website. It's very easy. Then on the actual RP60 controller, all you need to do is access the menu and then uh, manually input the IP setting for the camera. In our case, we'll use the UE40. Uh, the process is the same for each additional camera and uh, then you can just use the one of the five dedicated camera selection buttons to kind of go through each camera and then control it. Panasonic also redesigned their web interface uh, not that long ago, uh, around the time that the UE100 was introduced, uh, which is now easier to navigate and you can find things a lot more easier. It only took a few minutes for me to get familiar, make settings adjustments and control the cameras. 
having the ability to control these cameras via a web interface over a network has some significant advantages uh, as the cameras can be on the other side of the world while the operator uh, based in a studio armed with all necessary controls. I personally prefer to use the RP60 and control the cameras uh, as I do get much smoother uh, pans and zooms. Uh, but again, if you're on a budget, the web UI is a good place to start. The autofocus tracking feature on the UE40 is one of the highlights in my opinion, uh, as it is included at no additional cost. Panasonic also offers uh, more advanced paid licenses for uh, autofocus tracking for other models. Uh, however, I don't have access uh, to, to one for this demo, but from my experience so far, the built-in AF tracking uh, on the UE40 works really well. Autofocus tracking setup is a breeze as it only requires you to press a couple of buttons uh, for you to select whether you want to track your subject in a mid shot or a full body shot. The interface is clearly laid out and the autofocus tracking actually does a pretty good job of tracking the subject even when I go behind obstructions or leave the frame altogether uh, and it picks up as soon as I re-enter the frame as you can see on the screen right now. I think that for 90% of the use cases, the built-in tracking will suffice and it will do a pretty good job for events, for example, or corporate presentations. Also classroom environments where the background is not as busy and you have uh, one subject to track. Now, if you do need something a lot more advanced, if it's a more crowded uh, kind of scene, you have multiple cameras, then depending on the budget of your production, uh, you may want to consider the more advanced autofocus uh, tracking, the paid options. All in all, these three PTZ models from Panasonic are solid options for just about any budget on the spectrum. From a one-man band podcaster or streamer uh, or a small-scale event for which the UE40 will uh, be more suitable to higher-end broadcast work uh, or large-scale events where the uh, UE100 uh, and the 150 will offer better image quality, a more robust uh, connectivity required for uh, more advanced production workflows. And that's it for this video. I uh, hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit the like button and also subscribe so we can bring you more videos like this in the future.